La la la. Welcome to Honors Physics Lesson 2.1 Vectors. Oh yeah. All right. So first things first, um, I need to adjust this view because it is really big and doesn't fit all on the screen. So let's go back to there. There we go. All right. So quick review on triangles. So Sokotoa and the Pythagorean theorem. You're going to need to be able to utilize both of these. Um, if you have some experience with the law of sines and stuff, that's going to be great. Um, but really, we just need uh, this section right here. Um, in addition, we need to be able to read some things on the triangle. So if we're looking at this alpha angle right here, then this would be the opposite side, and this would be the adjacent, and this would be the hypotenuse. All right, moving on. So we've already done one-dimensional vectors, and we've had um, people walking two miles east, and then they went two miles west. And if we were to add those together, you know, the negative and positive would cancel out. So two miles plus, plus a negative two miles, we get zero miles as a resultant. Um, but in two dimensions, it's a little bit more complicated than just plus or minus. Um, we still have plus and minus, just with a little bit extra. Uh, for example, let's say we have a car, and it's driving 300 kilometers at 40 degrees south of west. So if we look at our cardinal directions here, where this is south, and this is north, east, west, um, we really can go anywhere. We don't have to just go north, we don't have to just go east, we can go northeast, we can go southwest. So we need to look at these um, areas in particular. So this one says south of west, 40 degrees south of west. So here's south, and we're going to be over here in the west side. Um, quadrant, so both negative, but it says south of west. So this is west, and this would be south of west. So it's talking about this angle right here. This is south of west. This angle would be west of south, right? Now, if you add them together, it should equal 90 degrees, but it's important to know what angle you're looking at. And then this line right here would be the 300 kilometers. Sweet. All right, a couple other things. Um, so with that, we need to be able to break up our vectors into their components. So if we look at this example right here, east, west, north, south, and 40 miles an hour east of south. What angle was that? 60. And these angles, I'm sorry, are not to scale. It is what it is. All right. So we need to be able to break these up into the x component and the y component. What's making it up? All right. And we need to be able to realize that that's also over here and over here so that we can see all these parts. So if we're looking at um, an angle that is east of south, this angle right here, we need to be able to look at this section right there. So yes, you can go over, then down, or down, then over. Um, Usually what I like to tell students and my peeps at home when I'm just sitting there chilling, eating my Captain Crunch, is do whatever works for your angle. All right, so two components. We have the horizontal component, which just focuses on the X, horizontal. And the vertical, which is our Y, and that only represents our Y. Because I said so. All right. Um, other quick thing, we can go in any of these directions. This map might help you as far as identifying what's west of south, what's east of south, 
um, just from a general perspective. Um, if you're at all like me and you're what we call directionally um, challenged, um, in other words, I get lost all the time for no apparent reason, even though I know exactly where I should be going, this might help. All right, never eat soggy waffles. Yay! All right, so let's say we have a car. It is going 40 miles an hour at 60 degrees east of south. We need to be able to break these up into our horizontal components. So how do we do that? Um, a little bit of trig. So here's our x component. And here is our y component. So you might notice that this forms a triangle. And uh, this is our opposite side. This is our adjacent. And then this would be our hypotenuse. So we can use so to find what our x and y components are. So here we have the angle. This is our opposite. So sine of 60 should equal our x over 40. And then over here, on our adjacent side, we're going to do cosine of 60. And that'll equal our y over 40. And hopefully, you get these two components of our, what will later be called, resultants. All right, sweet. Um, we will continue this on 2.2. Hopefully I didn't blow your mind. Or maybe I did. I don't know. All right. Oh, man, I'm hungry now. Awesome. Captain Crunch. All right. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.